Hi, I'm James Cunningham, and this is Eat Street, where you'll find the most daring and delicious street food around. First up, we're bussing to Houston, Texas for gourmet burgers and more with Bernie's Burger Bus. So good. I am a burger ninja. Next, we roll to Phoenix, Arizona for fiery Latin American sandwiches at the Ahi Mobile Truck. It's freaking amazing. This is one monster you're going to want hiding under your bed. And that's the food. Then, we're curbside in Columbus, Ohio for great and green cuisine at the Green Meanie Truck. Cheers! Perfect name for a big, mean, green lunch option. <laughs> And finally, we cruise to Orlando, Florida for savory Swedish fare with the Swede Dish Truck. This is the food of the gods, fit for a Viking. Mm. And it's awesome. Oh, yeah. All that and much, much more coming up on Eat Street. I bet you think you know all there is to know about burgers. Well, you're about to get schooled. In Houston, Texas, Chef Justin Turner has taken his love for gourmet burgers and hit the road in a big yellow school bus converted into a full-service kitchen on wheels. Mmm, oh man, that's good. At Bernie's Burger Bus, signature creations include the Field Trip, featuring a gorgonzola and bacon stuffed beef patty topped with prosciutto arugula salad, a slow-cooked barbecue beef brisket poutine on hand-cut fries. And if you're looking for trouble, try the Detention Burger with bourbon, onions, house-made pickles, and grilled cheeses for buns. Just gotta go all in, no fear. Here's a little lesson for you. A school bus plus gourmet hamburgers equals a Happy James. That's a little something we like to call math. Ow! We're in Houston, Texas, and this is Bernie's Burger Bus. Like them? We freaking love them! Mm. Best burgers in town. They hit the spot, man. At Bernie's Burger Bus, we make burgers all from scratch with really great ingredients. I love it! It's so good! Mm. And we happen to do it out of a school bus. Mm. Best burger I've had ever. Bernie's, Bernie's Burger Bus is worth skipping class for! Mm. Mm. I want my customers to come here and have a burger they've never had before. We can do that with our homemade condiments and our fresh ground meat. Some ketchup, homemade. The barbecue sauce, homemade. If you want fresh, like your mama, grandma made, Bernie's Burger Bus is where you go. Bernie's, Bernie's Burger, Burger Bus is good as hell. Mm. All right, folks, school's in session. Today, we're going on a field trip to Italy. Now we're going to make our field trip. We take ingredients that we like from Italy and press that into a burger. First, what we're going to do is make the stuffing for our stuffed patty. Applewood smoked bacon, mix it with some good gorgonzola blue cheese, granulated garlic, Worcestershire, black pepper. Now we're just going to get dirty and mix it all up. Freshly ground, brisket and chuck stuffing right in the center of the burger, seasoning it with salt and pepper straight onto our flat top. All right, while that's cooking, we're going to post our bun. This is a challah bun, nice little egg-based bread. Dress it with our homemade pesto mayo. Take our arugula, toss with a red wine vinaigrette. I got some nice prosciutto. Slice it up, mix it in with our arugula. <laughs> Patty is done. Prosciutto and arugula salad. Hit it with some slow roasted garlic tomatoes. Here it is. You're not going to want to miss the bus for this field trip. Mm, that's awesome. The blue cheese flavor comes straight through. Mmm, tomato. Is this prosciutto? Oh my god, yes. Garlic tomatoes, they're amazing. It overwhelms the burger. It's so good. Thank you, Bernie. We named our truck after my grandfather, Bernie, and Bernie was a big part of my life. I come from a gourmet background, worked in restaurants for 14 years, but I chose burgers because it was something that I felt people would gravitate towards. I am a burger ninja. Hiya! Today I ordered the honor roll fries because I'm a straight A student. It's time to make our honor roll fries. This is a Texas style poutine. Take our potatoes, put them in our fancy dancy french fry cutter, bring them right over to our fryer. The heart of these french fries is our slow cooked brisket that we cooked for five hours. Lay it on a bed of yellow onions and green onions. All we do is put salt, pepper, and granulated garlic on it. Throw it on the flat top, barbecue sauce, sweet and spicy. It's almost like a Memphis style. We're gonna start building our fries. White cheddar cheese, barbecue sauce, a little bit of bacon, and we're not even close to done. We're gonna add some more fries and some more cheese and some more bacon, hit it with our brisket. All that hard work has paid off. You're now on the honor roll. 
Mmm, it's good. The sauce is really sweet. It makes the fries and the brisket just melt in your mouth. Mm. You got the scallions for the nice bite. White cheddar cheese for the extra creaminess. And then that brisket. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about too. Let me get, get another, another bite because you deserve it. I do. Mmm. Today I'm eating the detention. A little bit of everything, actually. The detention burger. When we first opened, drunk guy wandered up, gave me $40, said, I want you to make the biggest damn burger I've ever seen. And the detention was born. First, we just shaved the tops off two buns, shaved the bottom, split the buns in half, butter all four sides. I didn't get this luscious figure for not buttering my buns. Now we're making badass bacon grilled cheeses. And these are gonna form the bun of our burger. Hand ground beef patties, homemade mayonnaise, shredded iceberg lettuce, slow roasted garlic tomatoes, our homemade ketchup, mustard pickles, similar to a bread and butter pickle, slowly cooked yellow onions that we deglaze with bourbon, aged cheddar cheese. People love it. In fact, I sell more than I expected every day. And here's the detention burger. Being bad never tasted so good. Eat it, Mark. Eat it, eat it, eat it. That's oh. it. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Mm, amazing every time. It's so juicy and great. Mm, that's an explosion of flavor. I'm sorry. That bacon, <laughs> that grilled cheese. Woo! I do taste the bourbon. It's part of the, one of the reasons why I get it. Best burger I've ever had. It is delicious. When I see a customer grab a burger and they take a oh. bite and they give that little nod and that little wink at the person they're sitting with, you know right then and there that you've got them. They love the burger and I can't ask for more than that. In Latin America, the word ahi means chili pepper, or a sauce made from chili peppers. In my tummy, however, the word ahi means yum, yum, yum. In Phoenix, Arizona, Chef Giancarlo Alarcon and his father Joe are bringing an authentic taste of Latin America curbside with their truck, Ahi Mobile. I'm the one with the brains. I'm the one with the brains. No, I'm the one. Best sellers include the tripleta with grilled steak, pulled pork, ham, and spicy Peruvian Ahi pepper sauce. The Hornado with beer, braised pork, and pickled red onion. And the Lomito with citrus marinated mojo steak, fries, and Cilantro. This is a stellar sandwich. Mmm, that's good ahi. But it could use a little more heat. Maybe not. One lomito, one gaucho. One lomito, one gaucho. Heard. Appreciate it. Mmm. Oh, this is damn good. Oh, you <laughs> <turn it down. laughs> I'm Giancarlo Alarcón. This is my old man, Joe. This is my baby boy. What are you calling a baby? You steal my baby. At the Aki truck, we're making the best Latin American sandwiches ever. And that's the truth. Wow. Man, delicious. It's freaking amazing. This is a monster. It's not going to eat me, but I'm going to eat it. Makes me feel like an Argentinian cowboy. <laughs> On the ahi truck, we're serving up a taste of Latin America on a roll. Peru, Latin Caribbean, Argentina, Ecuador. We're taking those flavors and we're sticking them on the sandwich. I have never had an Ecuadorian sandwich, but now I want to go to Ecuador. My taste buds are on a Peruvian holiday right now. I ordered the tripleta. I can't even say it. I ordered the tripleta. Same here. Now we're going to make the Puerto Rican tripleta sandwich. We call it the monster. <laughs> This sandwich features three meats, mojo marinated steak, the tangy marinade from Cuba, braised pork, and ham. We're gonna toast our bun, pile it on, don't wanna leave anything behind. Some lettuce, a little tomato, ají rosa is our sweet and spicy sauce. Ají is a chili pepper. When you put ají on something, it gives it that extra little wow. And now we top it off with a mound of shoestring potatoes. Here it is, the tripleta sandwich. This is one monster you're gonna want hiding under your bed. What, am I the only guy that hides sandwiches underneath his bed? That's amazing. Great flavor on the pulled pork. Mojo marinade's awesome. Shoestring fries adds a little crunchy texture. The sauce is really good. There's so many flavors that attack your mouth. It's awesome. I went to culinary school, worked at a couple restaurants, and with my dad's help, we decided to open Ahi Truck. I was in the corporate world for 35 years. I cashed in my retirement, and I invested in my son. Working with my son is great. I wouldn't want to do it any other way. I gave him as much of a hard time as he gave me when I was a kid. That's the truth. Have you seen these things? Like a car coming at you with its doors open. This is the hornado, marinated pulled pork. Now we're gonna give you a little taste of Ecuador with the hornado. I love this sandwich because my family is from Ecuador and this is a taste of home. And we're gonna make the marinade. Garlic cloves, orange juice, and the secret ingredient is beer. Mm. What are we making? Our secret spice blend, some ground achote seed. An Ecuadorian spice. Look at it change color. And now we're gonna pour this all over our pork butt. This braising liquid's gonna make this pork tangy, garlicky, and really, really juicy. 
Separate the pork, put it right on the flat top. Make sure the pork gets nice and crispy. Now that our buns nice and toasted, we'll take our nice big portion of pork, top it off with some of our citrus pickled onions with ají serranos. And here you have it, the Ecuadorian punch to your palate. Mmm, fantastic. Pork is very tender and juicy. It's very good. The onions got sweet and tangy to go with the savory pork. Very tender. I ordered the El Lomito. It's huge. Our Lomito sandwich. This is inspired by the Peruvian dish Lomo Saltado, which means jumping steak. So now we're going to make our Latin Caribbean mojo marinade, yellow onion, garlic, orange juice, a little lime juice, paprika, our secret spice blend, which has coriander, cumin, and some other spices I really can't tell you about. Salt, give it a quick whirl here. We use peeled knuckle so that the beef flavor doesn't get lost in the marinade. Let that marinate for at least six hours. Now we're gonna toss some fries into our fryer, get a nice and golden brown. Our mojo marinated steak, red onions, starting to get a nice sear on that meat. Fries are done, we're gonna go ahead and sit them right on the flat top. Hit it with our spicy soy ginger sauce. It's sweet, spicy, so we'll throw in our tomatoes. Buns nice and toasted. Take our lomito sandwich filling. It's all coming together now. You're gonna jump for joy when you eat this sandwich. Wow, the mojo marinade is really good. It's awesome. Soy ginger sauce goes really well with the steak. It's a little sweet, a little spicy. That's what Peru tastes like. I will have to eat the whole country. This is my mother, Gina. Very proud of him. He learned how to cook for my dad. That tradition just keeps on going. Oh my God, that is so good. Very, very delicious. It's awesome. You gotta come down to the ahi truck. Porque es muy sabroso. Parents know how hard it is getting their kids to eat greens. Well, it seems all you need is a giant ogre with a pitchfork. In Columbus, Ohio, truck owner Keith Smith and family are reinventing the sandwich with their flair for all things green. Oh, yeah. At the Green Mini Truck, don't be afraid to sink your teeth into a chicken spinach croquette sandwich served on fry bread with avocado and wasabi ranch dressing. The Bon Mini with spicy pork tenderloin, pickled veggies, and jalapeno aioli. And the Greens Egg and Ham with braised pork belly served on house-made white cheddar polenta. Even the healthy part is good. Okay, so a giant ogre with a pitchfork isn't all you need. Great food helps too, although it's still worth a try. Heads, eat your greens! Please. Please. He's hungry! Green meanie, everyone loves it. So, so good. Cheers! <laughs> That is next level awesomeness. What I wanted to do with the Green Mini was find a different vehicle for a sandwich. It's like sandwich-esque. Comfort food with the spin on it. The green is really about incorporating a lot of fresh produce and green sauces. It's just an emphasis on fresh and bright colors, flavors. Perfect name for a big, mean, green lunch option. <laughs> Some days I am the Mini, but I'm really not that mean. What can Hi. I do for you? I'm gonna get the namesake. I want the green mini. It's a signature dish for the green mini food truck. Crispy Native American fry bread, golden chicken croquette, all the green you could ever want. This is the base of our croquette with chicken breast, green onions, celery, garlic, and chicken stock. Now we're gonna take our chicken to the blender. We're gonna add our chicken back to the pan. We're gonna add cream and spinach. This is gonna be the binder for our croquette. All-purpose flour, farm fresh eggs, and some panko breadcrumb. Now we're ready to get them crispy and delicious put the crunch in the croquettes. Next we're gonna do our fry bread. Fries up nice, it's got a wonderful tooth, a little bit of chew, a little bit of crunch. Our mescaline mix, add our croquette, avocado, scallion, plum tomatoes. And next we're gonna add a wasabi ranch sauce. Then we finish with our green mini signature sauce. Fresh pig cilantro, fresh scallion, fresh garlic. Here we have our signature sandwich. So pretty. Oh my gosh, amazing. This fried bread gives it a little crunch. The chicken croquette is really, really moist. The panko bready makes it really crispy. Definitely worth the namesake. So good. Grew up in farm country, worked in restaurants and kitchens. It's all East Street, thought that was a cool thing. My wife and family, we decided that we want to start a food truck. We're happy working together. At least I am. <laughs> they seem to be. <laughs> Bonmini. Everyone's heard of the bon mi, but this is the bon mini. Our take on the traditional Vietnamese bon mi. We're going to start with our wonderfully cooked pork tenderloin. Then we're going to add the marinated poison and sriracha, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, fish sauce, ready to fill the sandwich. Slice it up. 
put it on our French baguette, pickled veg, keynote and a banh mi sandwich, blanched green bean, basil, cilantro, cucumber, and then we're gonna top it off with the jalapeno aioli. And here we go. You have the banh mi, try the banh mi. -ni. It's so juicy, it's so tender, melts in your mouth. Sweet, sour, crunchy, soft, creamy, amazing. We have here the greens, eggs, and ham. We do greens, egg, and ham. We're pretty proud of it. For our foundation, we're gonna use white cheddar polenta. Get it golden brown. And it should be crispy to the touch. That is pretty sweet. Right here we have braised pork belly. Take this to the flat top and get it nice and crispy. The spice rub that we put on it, it has fennel, allspice, salt, and pepper. Next, we poach an egg. Poached egg is just like a little extra bonus runny, creamy. You'll take our crispy pork belly and bring it to our polenta. Our egg is poached, our pork belly glazed super concentrated reduction. Kale microgreens for our homemade blackberry compote. If you want to, and if you can, green mini food trucks, greens, egg, and ham. Mm, the polenta has a real crunchy crust to it. Right on top of that pork belly, real melty fat seeps down into the polenta underneath. Fantastic. The blackberry compote, sweet. The microgreens are very delicate. Mark that off my bucket list. <gasps> I just really appreciate the green meaning. You can always rely on fresh ingredients. It's epic to another level. I mean, look at it. If you're ever in Columbus and you see that guy, come get something to eat. We're gonna do it at least for another week. <laughs> I always thought that Vikings were a bunch of guys in pointy hats who invaded parts of Europe back in the day. I didn't realize. They invaded Florida too? In Orlando, Florida, creative and tasty Swedish cuisine has sailed into town on a blue and yellow truck known simply as Swede Dish. Delicious. Here, owner Vivica Averstad is serving up big and bold combos like a mashed potato and crab salad hot dog wrapped up in fresh grilled flatbread, a surf and turf burger with a juniper berry and beef patty, white cheddar and lump blue crab meat, and everyone's favorite, Swedish meatballs with a side of cucumber salad and lingonberry jam. Excellent combination. Well, looks like these modern Vikings still have bad taste in hats. Their food taste, though, looks all conquering. The Swedish food truck. This is the food of the gods. So you ready? Amazing. Burger fit for a Viking. It's awesome. <sighs> Swedish food made by a crazy Swede. This food's gonna make you wish you were Swedish. Swedish food is still a little exotic here. What most people think about, obviously, is Swedish meatballs. That's a tour of Sweden on a fork. Swedish food is uh, a lot about comfort food. They've got really good burgers, really fresh. Every time I've come, I've tried something different. It's not a meal, it's an experience. Mmm, delicious. This is the Viking dog. So what, the Viking dog, it's a crazy meal. It's what they call Sweden's hangover cure. The first thing I'm gonna show you, my homemade mashed potatoes, a lot of butter. You need to have strong arms. And then I'm gonna add Swedish spices. The next step is my crab salad, mayo, red onion, fresh dill. This is looking good, spice it up. All beef hot dog, Swedish thin bread, and then heat it up. Ready to go. Two scoops of the mashed potatoes, Swedish spice, the hot dog. Crab salad, fried onions. We just wrap it. So the Viking dog. Just the whole melting of flavors. So good. <laughs> the hot dog's a little bit salty, which is awesome. The mashed potatoes, the thingy, crab salad. Yeah. It's awesome. My mouth is happy. <laughs> I never worked in a restaurant, but my passion for food is in my family. I opened a food truck because I want to share my passion for Swedish food. You have to be a little bit crazy. Oh. And it's fun, and people enjoy it, and having a good time, and that's what it's all about for me. I ordered the Balder. We have an awesome burger named Balder, the surf and turf burger. It starts with beautiful ground beef. We're gonna spice it up, it's special sauce, similar to soy sauce, juniper berries. Mmm, looks yummy, doesn't it? I put it on the grill to cook for about six, seven minutes. We're gonna add white sharp cheddar cheese. It reminds me a little bit of some Swedish cheeses. We're gonna start with arugula salad, Vivica's secret sauce. We are ready for the burger. The blue crab meat, crispy onions, and of course the Swedish flag. There you have it. 
bolder. Mm. Mm, nom, nom. It's amazing that you can pack this much flavor between two buns. The big thing is it's fresh crab. Oh my god, it's so juicy. That is awesome. Yeah, you betcha. What we have here are Swedish meatballs, and you gotta hand it to the Swedes. They made small balls a world-renowned delicacy. Good meatballs always start with a great ground beef. You start with the salt, white pepper, chopped onion, and red crumbs, which I soaked in milk. One egg in the mixer and bind it together. My first year, I made 17,249 meatballs. Let's add them to the pan. Seven, eight minutes, nice and brown. Put it on the plate with mashed potatoes, Add the gravy. The Swedish spices, lingonberry yam, similar to cranberry, but not so tart. Cucumber salad. Here we go, guys. My famous Swedish meat was enjoy. I'm James Cunningham, and this is Eat Street, where you'll find the most daring and delicious street food around. First up, we're trawling the streets of Brooklyn for crawfish with the Jen and Outlaw truck. Just great, awesome food from the south, and we don't have that around here. Spicy, salty, delicious. Mm, it's good stuff. Then we're rocking and rolling with Island Spice at the Riffs Truck in Nashville. Jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. Anything has jerk on it, you're supposed to try it. It's delicious. <laughs> then we're crossing culinary borders with the Dos Chinos Truck in Orange County. Dos Chinos is a Latin Asian rub. Thai coconut curry chicken taco. Saigon shrimp ceviche. Mm. Dos Chinos. And we're curbside with Sugar Lips, the first lady of donuts in Denver. They're hot and fresh. We make them made to order, and they are so amazing. It's like having a perfect little dessert. <laughs> All that and much, much more coming up on Eat Street. We've seen some characters on this show, but we've never encountered any quite like this. We found him in New York. Where else? An odd couple from the Deep South named Jen and Outlaw. With their newfangled truck and down-home recipes, this good old boy... Ah, sweet tea and fried moon pies! Phew! ...and girl are cooking up Confederate specials that'll leave your mouth watering and your head spinning. It's serious. Mm, it's serious business. I'd like to tell you more about them, but quite frankly, they defy description. See for yourself. There are lots of food trucks in New York City, but there's nothing like this. There's no good Southern food here and nothing like this. It's perfect. New York needs this kind of thing. We decided to do a fish fry and a crawfish boil. It's something we just grew up with. It's something we really wanted to introduce to the community in New York. Just great, awesome food from the South, and we don't have that around here. When Jen and Outlaw pull up, made time in my day to come over. Mm -hmm. Double. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of Louisiana. Good Cajun food, really good. Mm -hmm. It makes people happy, and we like that. It's slamming. Mm -hmm. Bam. We each play very important roles, I'm sure. This is Jen. I'm from Southern Illinois, way deep out in the country. Cooking is just ingrained in who I am. And this is Outlaw. I'm from Fairhope, Alabama. A lot of catfishing down there. There's no other place like it in the world. These are pretty much the same clothes I've worn since I was six years old. I live this life. I make my own clothes. I want it yeah. to look classic American. She looks like a firework. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this recipe comes from a long line of crawfish boilers that I grew up with. It starts off with fresh crawfish. We get them shipped in from Louisiana. That's the cooler full of mud bugs. We separate them on the truck, the live ones from the dead ones, because you got to cook the live ones. They always put their hands up in the air. Dude. They're fighters, yeah. Then you got to get your boil, your boil rolling. It's 120 quart pot. Big pot. And we get the thing boiling hot and boiling fast. So the main spices we use in this is cayenne, cayenne, <laughs> oh, excuse me, cayenne and cayenne. Woo! Stuff's good. All right, it's time to put the crawfish in. Bring them back for a boil for about a minute or two. Then we turn the heat off and just let them soak for about 10 minutes. Spicy, salty, delicious. So this is our large crawfish boil. Mm, it's good stuff. You have to pinch the tail and also suck the head to get the extra seasoning. Yeah, this is really good. Now all your flavors and all your spices are in the head. Suck the brains right off. <laughs> I feel smarter already. Yeah, you should. <laughs> The truck was an old carpenter's truck. We had to tear everything out. What's the food truck missing? Seats, tables. Taking the back end of the truck and actually cutting it in like a cube fashion. Putting a hinge on the back and then adding the hydraulic arm, which just pushed the entire back end of the truck open. I've never heard of a transformer of southern cuisine before, but this is pretty much it. 
Right. Fully functioning portable restaurant. This was nothing but America. A patriotic automobile. <laughs> One of our pride and joys is the catfish po' boy. It's the best catfish po' boy east of the Mississippi. Uh, I think this buttermilk is what really separates the really good catfish po' boys from the mediocre. I love that sound. The catfish is breaded in a cornmeal mixture. You can't fry catfish without cornmeal. No. The filet is deep fried to perfection and joins some jalapeno coleslaw on a New Orleans style roll that doused in a spicy remoulade sauce. You do not leave this truck hungry. I don't think I've ever seen a po' boy this big. That's a big sandwich. That's half. It's delicious. That's the other half of the sandwich. <laughs> Really good. We're trying to bring America back, one po' boy at a time. Deep fried pickles will change your life. Best deep fried pickles you'll ever have. I get the pickles whole and I chop them up in the morning so they're still crisp, they're still fresh. I batter them up and then they're ready for fried. And then we dip it in a buttermilk dill dipping sauce, which complements the pickles perfectly. They're light, they're crispy, they're juicy. They're the best fried pickles you'll ever have in your life. The thing about fried pickles, you just want that nice crispiness and that butteriness. I could just eat a giant bowl of fried pickles every day. Really great deep fried pickles. Mm. Incredible. It's a little colder today, and it was raining, and people were still sitting in the rain and enjoying themselves. It's raining, it's, it's gross, but this is worth it. We had a great time because everyone was still coming out. They're troopers. Yeah. yeah. Sit in the rain and eat it. I'm pretty proud of them. <laughs> Man, we took the South's favorite treat and made it better. A moon pie is a southern delicacy. Layers of marshmallow, chocolate, and like a cookie. Puts hair on your chest. <laughs> right, it's good for you. We start with a moon pie. I batter it up. The batter is kind of similar to a funnel cake batter. And then I deep fry until it turns a golden brown perfection. I get really excited about these moon pies. I like to top it off with a little powdered sugar. And crown it with whipped cream. Perfect. There it is. This is a deep fried moon pie. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is amazing. This is what I needed. <laughs> It's been really well received. We have a huge response. People love it. We get lines around the block sometimes because people say they've been waiting for weeks for us to come around. And we, we're like, well, we're glad you found us when we made it. Yeah, this did not taste like New York City. This turned out to be a fantastic place for it. I mean, New York City is the place to be. We love what we do. Even though most of the bigger cities have had it for a while, the street food revolution is just starting to catch on in some parts of North America. One place that's really getting its act together is Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. There, Riff's Truck is serving up traditional Caribbean cuisine like jerk chicken and cod cakes, and the locals are singing its praises. Mm, very good. It's really, really good. Alas, not all cities are as progressive as Nashville. People in Toronto, Chicago, Montreal still can't get this kind of food in the street. Weep for them. We've been waiting for some good food trucks for a long time. This is the first yeah. Caribbean food we've had. They like to make stuff that actually has a spring in the taste, you know, pop out or two. In this mobile kitchen, Caribbean cuisine gets riffed on with some southern fried style, and these chefs love to jam. We've riffed on just about everything that you can see or taste in a standard Caribbean menu. I've never had anything like it before. That's awesome. Great flavor. All fresh, all delicious, all amazing, all riffs. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the moment I knew I wanted to work with Carlos was the day I tasted his jerk seasoning. It was mind-blowing for me. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. Jerk chicken? Jerk chicken. Anything has jerk on it, you're supposed to try it. This is ground zero for all good, spicy Caribbean food. It actually takes 14 different ingredients to me. And this is the part that's scary. It's so hot. There are three more ingredients that we use for this particular mix. But you're not going to know what they are. But I'll tell you this much. They are found in the Caribbean. Enough, Carlos. Barbados is well known for this one ingredient. My god! Still never. Weak. He's still you never going to figure out how to make it. You leave it in that marinade for about six or eight hours and you've got the most tender piece bursting with flavor. Kind of spicy, kind of sweet too. It's sweet, but don't be fooled. It has a wicked kick. Woo. Hits you in the back of the throat. Spicy. <laughs> I think I definitely want the oh, skirt steak. Skirt steak taco. It's been marinating in soy sauce, a little bit of hoisin, and dark beer. Perfect. 
We're gonna serve it with a nice black eyed pea salad. Oh, and you can just smell all those seasonings. This is a zesty watermelon slaw. It's got cantaloupe, cilantro, red onion, and of course, watermelon. Bajan style skirt steak taco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It's kind of uh, a little bit zesty. It's nice on a hot day <laughs> to have something refreshing. Last year, Nashville got hit by a, a major flood. Carlos and I met each other doing relief work, serving food to people who were going out and rebuilding people's homes. We noticed straight away that we were kindred spirits. We are like practically twins. <laughs> so just for fun, we said, let's go do some Caribbean food somewhere. Today, I got the codfish cakes. This is our codfish cake batter. Parsley, diced onions, chives, fresh thyme, garlic, baking powder, flour, all those things mixed up to a nice, rich batter. All it is is just little bits of flaky flavor. As soon as you drop them into the oil, pop right up, and they get a nice golden color, and in about two or three minutes, they're ready to come up. And I can tell you exactly what a salted codfish cake is. It's a savory donut. Beautiful. They are flavor bombs. These are awesome. <laughs> Learning to cook in Caribbean culture is pretty huge. That was one of the things that my mom uh, taught me. Conkeys is probably the weirdest name dish we have because you cannot figure out at all what they are by the name. What they are is sweet potato, pumpkin, and coconut inside a banana leaf. Inside of that, we have sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cranberries. We keep it neat. There's a special fold, fold one, right there. So it makes a nice little basket and it's steamed, almost like a, like a dumpling, you could say. We dress it up a little bit with some caramel and some toasted coconut. Woo! Mom, I think I got your beat. <laughs> it's a joy to bring this kind of food out to people, and it's awesome to see them love it the way we love it. Really, that's where the magic happens. Some people want an office with windows. We've got it. All we and, need is uh, air conditioning. <laughs> All we need is air conditioning. <laughs> One day. Let's face it, Mexican-Asian fusion is to food trucks what burgers and fries are to fast food. We've had our share of it on this series, and we thought we had our fill until we met these guys. In Orange County, California, a hugely popular truck called Los Chinos is taking Mexican and Asian flavors way beyond the cliche. Two tacos for buddy? <laughs> the Korean barbecue tacos are made with prime cut ribeye beef and the exotic specials like Saigon shrimp ceviche are almost too good to be true. Mmm. Delicious. I love a thing to eating a taco. Two tacos? Oh, you know it. Dos chinos. Dos chinos. I love these guys. They're my favorite food truck. Nice and soft. I'll eat this any day. Marinated really well. It's got a little bit of heat to it, but not too overpowering. It's great. Good. <laughs> Those chinos is a uh, Latin Asian grub. We grew up in Santa Ana, so uh, you know, surrounded by a lot of Mexican and Orange County. There's a lot of Asian restaurants and eateries, so I figured, why not combine the two? You know. We got one truck, but we're getting a lot of attention, and you know, everyone seems to love it. Mm. What's up? Hey, can I get a Hollywood chicken torta? They've done a fantastic job of taking the flavors of both Mexican food and Asian food and really blending it together well to make dishes that are just amazing. I've followed this food truck a couple times. They have a better variety than most other food trucks. It's original. Hey, how you doing there? Hey, I'll get the breakfast burrito. Right now, we're going to make the uh, breakfast burrito. It's got the chorizo fried rice in it. It's got the asada and our chimichurri sauce. Some butter on there, chorizo, day old rice, mix it in there. It's kind of a Chinese restaurant secret. The consistency is a lot better. Chinese sausage, pineapple, sriracha. Now we're gonna make the asada. It's like a ribeye steak, cooked Vietnamese, Mexican style. Start with our chimichurri, which is minced garlic, green onions, a little oil. And then we got our steak. Looks like it's ready. Couple eggs here, throw in our burrito. All right, here we go. Jack cheddar cheese, tree stir fried rice, ribeye asada, two eggs, onions, cilantro, salsa verde, and then we'll just roll it up. Those chinos breakfast burrito. It gets pretty big, maybe the size of a little baby. 
It's like the best burrito I've ever had. It's really tangy, flavorful. It is absolutely delicious. I did not realize this thing was going to be this big. It's going to be all over my face now. <laughs> I grew up in a family of chefs and restaurant owners, so uh, I've always had in the back of my mind that I want a restaurant. I saw this as a, a viable option. Yeah, it's total 850. I've known Hop since the second grade. He called me about maybe six months back, saying, you know, I got this truck thing. And then I tasted the food. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Right, let me get the ceviche. We're making the uh, Saigon shrimp ceviche. The acids and the lemon juice cooks it overnight. So uh, all we have to do now is drain it off. And we also have freshly squeezed tangerine juice. Gives it a nice flavor. And sweet pepper medley with Persian cucumbers and pineapple. Get some shrimp. Almost everything has onions and cilantro. Top it off with some more pepper medley. And our chips are done. Here's the uh, Saigon shrimp ceviche. I love it. <laughs> What's the right combination of the flavors? You hear the crunch? Oh, sorry, whoever's car that is. <laughs> Hollywood taco! We're gonna do the Hollywood chicken taco. We call it Hollywood because there's a lot of Thai people in Hollywood and it's a Thai coconut curry chicken. We'll start off with the uh, clarified garlic butter. And our uh, curry. And then once that's nice and mixed in, we want to put in our coconut milk. Curry and the coconut milk and the chicken has a nice flavor. It's basically ready. Here's our Hollywood chicken tacos with sour cream and tamarind. Oh, baby! I still like drums. Did it over there. Uh, ta Hollywood tacos? Yeah. yeah, let me get you another one. There you go, man. Thank you. Don't drop it. I won't. The turnout was good, and uh, I was really surprised by uh, the amount of people that showed up. The following they've brought on here in Orange County is pretty impressive. It almost gets hard to eat at them, and the lines tend to get pretty big. I understand that people are here for lunch, and they don't have a lot of time to eat, so we want to get the food out there as fast as we can. Tocitos! There's more to selling food on the street than simply selling food on the street. You need a gimmick, and trust me, you won't find one any cuter than this. In Denver, a retro-style trailer called Sugar Lips is cranking out donuts by the dozen and smiles by the second. I'm actually one of her best customers. <laughs> oh, really? It's a family-friendly world conceived and run by a family-friendly hostess, and it's all just too darn sweet to resist. Donut stores of Denver beware. There's a savvy new upstart in town, and her name is Sugar Lips. Don't say I didn't warn you. Aw. Oh. The deal with Sugar Lips, they are incredibly addictive donuts. Kids love her food. When it comes to getting donuts in Denver, every mom in town knows this is the place to be. I love the donuts. <laughs> they kind of melt when you put them in your mouth. I like the size of them. Because they're easy to share. Oh my god. They're like a regular donut, just mini, just tiny little bite-sized bits of heaven. <laughs> they're hot and fresh. We make them made to order. And they are so amazing. Jasmine is amazing. She gets you from the second you see that trailer. It's inviting. She's got lawn chairs out front. She's got pink flamingos. Her apron matches the decor, and it's awesome. I love the style. Gavin, yeah. are you ready for some donuts? Yeah, some mini donuts? It's sugar heaven. You have shave ice with all sorts of different flavors. I think it's delicious. She usually has two different kinds of powdered toppings, a cinnamon sugar topping and then a powdered sugar topping, and then the super duper fancy schmancy toppings. You get sugar on top of your sugar. Good, fast, and cheap, and shareable. Cheers. Uh. <laughs> So we start out with pretty basic dough, egg, sugar, flour. We're going to make a four and a half pound batch of dough, about 300 mini donuts. Things rise differently here at a higher elevation. If we didn't add the extra flour, they wouldn't fully raise as much as we wanted to. They'd be a little leaner. We've got donuts down to a science. A pound and a half of distilled water. Get a little stir going. Consistency looks pretty good. So now we'll go ahead and add our dough to the hopper. And now the hopper starts dropping the dough directly into the hot oil. It starts swimming down the river. And then when it reaches the first paddle, it flips it over, cooks it on the other side. And then the last flipper flips them out directly into the basket. The counter broke. So we're at about 250,000 donuts now on this machine. It is the coolest machine ever. Elegy at its finest, right? 
Jasmine wasn't always the donut queen. I was in the art world and owned an art gallery and then just decided to kind of take a different direction. So I found this 1961 Cardinal, fixed her up and repainted it and gutted the inside and redid the whole thing to make it an actual kitchen. Half dozen, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. I raised her on health food. Halloween, she'd get to go collect all the candy. Then I would give it to someone else and give her fruit and raisins and nuts. Now my life is all about sugar. I own a business named Sugar Lips. I have like a half dozen of your s'mores amazingness. My personal favorite, the s'mores. We'll do a nice chocolate drizzle on top, some marshmallow cream, and graham cracker crumbs. Not too decadent at all. Super light. <laughs> half dozen s'mores. They're not super sweet. You can eat all of them without getting all that sugar. We use soybean oil to cook up our donuts. And then when we're done with the oil, we actually donate it to Denver Biodiesel. And they reuse it to run their vehicles. Our actual machine is about 15 years old. So it's, you know, not ancient, but mechanically things are starting to wear down a little. Hello. Luckily, I have my dad on call who came and was able to save the day, which he does rather often. I think it's important to teach these lessons to our children. If you need something, dad and mom are there for you. Jasmine keeps the crowds happy with her diverse donut menu, and the flavor of the week is jalapeno jelly and bacon. So we'll start off with some cream cheese frosting, followed by some spicy jalapeno jam. We'll add some real bacon bits. You've got your sweet, your salty, and your chewy, and your crisp. Super delicious, just even on toast, but I prefer it on donuts. <laughs> Another cherry shave ice? Yes. We have our fancy little shave ice machine, which is essentially just a really fancy blender. So we go ahead and put our ice in, turn it on, and fill up our container. Shovel some in the cup, and then we use our fancy little shaper. Get nice and round. We top it with various flavors. Wawa watermelon, grape escape, and cherry jubilee. Some people put too much syrup on it, so this is good. Stripe of grape to make it a rainbow. Finish it off with a fancy little straw with a scoop on the end, and you're all set. Rainbow shave ice. Delicious. People ask me all the time if I live in the trailer. I'm like, yeah, I just sleep in here and like wake up and <laughs> make the donuts. She's in a trailer, 10 foot trailer with hot popping grease, one foot from her face, and she's smiling. It's hard work, it's hot, you always smell like a donut, but in the end, it's really, really fun. Fun to be social and make people happy. I'm gonna do this until I have world donut domination.